can do this, you can do this. Don't drop these, Michelle. That happened. You don't want to bake the flour. That's it. All you have to do is fill the jar. See, this is newbie canning. Newbie canning. There we go. Don't can in your instant pot. Please all go in there. And don't judge the dirty oven. I'm getting flour up my nose. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be dry canning flour in my ball jars. I'm only going to do maybe four because there's a shortage on jars, but I've been buying flour because of the way the world is going and you just never know what's going to happen. I've been buying, when I go to the store, a bag of flour. So I have several bags of all-purpose flour that I just don't want to leave sit around. They get bugs in them and they could have already had bugs in them. Eggs from the flour factory, you never know. When I bring them home, I stick them in the freezer because that, that will kill any bugs or any mutants that might be growing in your flour. Yeah, that that's a real thing. It's a real thing. So I'm gonna can this. I'm gonna dry can this. Hopefully I won't have to open this anytime soon. I don't know. I'm gonna be dry canning more flour later on because I do have several bags. It all depends on how many jars I have left because there's a jar shortage and a lid shortage. So yeah, that's pretty bad the way the world's going today. So I have my oven set at 200 degrees. You don't want to go any higher than 200 degrees. These jars are dry, they're clean, and they're cold. They're not their room temperature. They're not warm like the oven. You want to make sure your jars are dry. Everything, everything has to stay dry when you do this. This will last up to maybe five years or more, maybe even longer. I've heard five years. It might last longer on your shelf once you do this process. And it's so easy. Anybody can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. Trust me. Trust me. So what I have here, I've just got four jars. Let me move these back. I have my handy dandy handy handy dandy handy dandy this thing here what is this thing called like a funnel okay yeah we'll call it the funnel and i have my bag of flour and all i'm gonna do is fill the jar that's it all you have to do is fill the jar oh i made a mess yeah probably should have maybe i should have got a smaller scoop I'm gonna get flour everywhere. Never, ever, ever bang your jars on the counter. You don't wanna break or crack your jar, especially now. Can't replace the jar easily. Just kinda of hit it on the bottom. Make sure it gets packed. Woo, look at it. It's flying out of there. Can you see that flying out of there? Make sure it's packed down. I probably can add a little bit more. Then we'll pack it down again. You wanna fill the jar as full as you can get it. Try not to overfill it. That's just more you have to clean. I wonder if I could do it with that thing on there. Probably not. Try not to overfill it because then that's more of a mess you got to clean up. You want to try to keep as much as you can off the rim of the actual jar. I mean, when I do that, of course, there's powder coming. So just disregard everything I said. Because we're going to clean that off of there anyway. Now, in normal canning, you need to leave either a, on some things an inch headspace or a half an inch headspace. You don't want to leave any headspace. You don't need to leave a headspace on this. So we're going to keep filling here until that jar is completely full. Will this make your flour like hard and clumpy when you try to get it out? No, it won't. It'll be fine. You'll be able to pour it out of the jar like normal. You can can this in a bigger jar too. I wouldn't recommend a smaller one. And I might have overfilled this. Let's hope. Please all go in there. All right, we're going to leave that as it is. That's pretty full. Cool. We're gonna set that off to the side and I'll fill one more. Look how pretty that is. That's just pretty. And we'll fill one more jar. So when you go to the store, pick up some flour, if you have canning jars, and fill them up, fill a couple up. 
the long term storage that you get out of here is worth the purchase of a few, just a few canning jars. I'm getting flour up my nose. All right. Let me give that a pack. Whoa! Did you see that? Yeah, that happened. That happened. Oh, and I just dropped the jar and oh, here, let me blow. Let's try to get all that. Look at it. All right, let's try that again. Not so hard though. And maybe I won't drop the jar this time. Jeez. All right, good, it's going down. Yay. Okay, carefully, let's do this carefully. Cause I, I got that pretty full one there. I don't want to have a flower mess when I take it off. Oh look, it's going down. This is starting to hurt my hand. So this is all you do. You just fill your jar. Let's see. Oh, oh look. Look at that. That worked out perfectly. Okay, we're gonna leave that just like that. Brush, need a brush. I know it's little, I know, but it, look, it works. Oh, uh, look at that. All right, I suggest buying a brush when you do this or using an old makeup brush that's clean or a kid's paintbrush to get it off the edges. I am going to wipe the rims there. So just brush the flower off. One more. These canning jars are so pretty when they're, aren't they so pretty? But like I was saying, 200 degrees, my oven's already heated up. We're gonna put these in the oven for 40 minutes. We're gonna go with 40 minutes. No longer than an hour. Don't put the lids on. You don't want your flour to bake. I've got a dry paper towel. And we're gonna go ahead and just wipe these rims off because we don't want any flour on these rims at all. We want these to seal when they come out of the oven, so you wanna make sure to get all the flour off the rim. If for any reason these don't seal, just use that jar first. Just use that jar first, that's all you have to do. Okay, these are ready to go in the oven, so let, let's head over to the oven. I'm gonna put these in my oven on the top shelf. Here, let me show you where my oven rack is. Just normal, and don't judge the dirty oven. You know, hey. It's just in a normal, normal baking position. I'm gonna go ahead and set these in the oven on that top shelf that I showed you in, in my dirty oven. Jar number two. <laughs> be careful, that one was wiggling, so be careful when you put them in here. One more. I have them evenly spaced in there. You don't want them touching each other. No lids because you don't want to bake the flour. I'll set my timer for 40 minutes and we'll be back to get the flour out of the oven. If you've never canned before and want to try dry canning, do your research. Don't just look at one video, just my video, or read one article about it. Do your research. And when you do this research, you'll find that everybody will tell you something different. That's what I've been finding. I'm a new canner this year, and I have found that everybody tells you some everybody tells you something a little bit different when you do this research you're gonna find some people will even say it's not called canning but it's worked for generations generations of people have, have done this they did this back in the olden days so do your research if you're wanting to buy a canner do your research on that there's several kind of canners out there you can buy there's stovetop canners there's the All-American. I have a Presto. Right now, I'll tell you those are hard to find also. Don't can in your Instant Pot. Don't do that. I know it may say it's for canning. Don't do that. Go read about that. The safety on canning with electric appliances like that, they're not approved. They're not approved yet. They haven't been tested. The food in the jar needs to get hot. It's called pressure canning, but what we're really doing is canning with a high heat. So what you want is that high heat, and it's not been yet tested in the, say, Instant Pot electric devices. That heat has to get high. That heat has to get hot in order for 
the bacteria to be killed. So be very careful if you're canning with an electric Instapot or a device of any sort, do your research on that and find out why that could cause botulism in your food. You want to be very, very careful and you want to be safe when you can. When you're using a pressure canner, the pressure build slowly. You want the pressure to build very, very slowly. That heats up these jars in the content slowly. The pressure in the canner causes the high heat. That is what is causing the high heat. You need that high heat in the pressure canner for your jars, for your content of the jars, not to get botulism. That's where the controversy lies with the pressure canner, pressure cooker, pressure pot, instant pot, and the whole thing. So that's where the controversy lies with the electric pressure canners, instant pot. There haven't been enough studies done to show that the contents of the jar is getting hot enough for a long enough time. And with that being said, in the pressure canner, the pressure comes down slow. You need that pressure to come down slow, just as slow as it went up in the canner when you started it, it needs to come down that much slower. So with all that being said, your kitchen, your rules, do what you wanna do. It's your food, it's your life, it's your, it's your business. But until the FDA approves that method of electric cookers to can in, I personally won't do it. That's just my personal opinion. Will I oven can flour? I'll do that because I know that's been proven to work over and over and over for generations. Doing a quick Google search. I just asked Google right here if the electric canner was safe. Important fact, the USDA does not endorse using their canning processes or processing times in electric pressure cooker appliances. That covers all of them. The appliances are acceptable for cooking food, but not canning. It is especially dangerous to use these appliances to attempt to can meat or vegetables. So you want to keep your, especially your meat and vegetables out of them. There's a big controversy on this because I've been doing a lot of research on this. I recently did a video canning corn with one of my friends, Peggy from Page Family Homestead. She's the one that taught me how to can. I asked her that question in the video because I'm a newbie. I'm new at this. She's been schooled on this. She's taken classes. She is very, very good good at what she does. The concern of botulism is real if you can in, in these canners. So do your research. If you're wanting to buy a canner, like the regular, hold on, I'll go get mine. Here is my pressure canner. It's a Presto Cat pressure canner. I bought it this year. Luckily I found one because they were hard to come by. There's a difference between a pressure canner and a pressure cooker. If you're wanting to buy something to can with, read on the box, make sure it says pressure canner, not pressure canner, cooker, just pressure canner. There's a difference. Also, label. Labeling is good. You need to label your jars in the date and month that you made that item so you'll know when to eat it. And when you can more, put those jars in the back so you know to use the ones in the front. Rotate. Rotate your canning stock. That's a good tip for you there. We have 22 seconds to go. So, do flour at your own risk. Can the flour. It's worked for generations. Do that at your own risk. If you're going to can an electric pressure canner, cooker, Instapot kind of thing, no. The beeper's going off. Do that at your own risk, knowing that the food inside the container probably isn't getting hot enough for the bacteria to be killed and you need that you need that hot enough so until they do more testing a lot more testing on that do that at your own risk too so be very careful either way you do it read read the articles and do what's best for you your kitchen your rules all right, it's time to get these out of the oven. Wish, wish me luck. Don't drop these, Michelle. So what we're gonna do, let me tell you ahead of time. I've got my lid and my ring. What I'm going to do is get the jar out of the oven, of course, carefully. It's gonna be really hot. We're gonna put this lid on that jar. I've got a towel here. I'm gonna get them out one at a time. 
but there we go. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. I'm going to set them on on this towel here. I do have a glass top stove with, I'm going to drop this, with a, a board on it. There's a board on top of here. The lid on it. Just drop the lid on it. And then tighten it down. And I'll just set it out of the way. They're hot. Let's get another one. And you get these 12 to 24 hours for the seal to pop. I almost grabbed this jar with my hand. See, this is newbie canning. Newbie canning. There we go. I'm going to tighten that down on there. There's it. Oh, yep, they're hot. So when you do this, do it at your own risk. No, there is controversy over doing this, but it's worked for generations. It's worked for generations, so there we go. But when you're canning, do your research, especially if you're new. Do your research. Read. Read as much as you can about this. Study different methods, different ways. People have different recipes, different, different ways of doing it. Follow the FDA guidelines. Do that. And do what's right for you. Be careful of botulism. You don't want to make your family sick. Especially in years from now, if this is the only food we have, you don't you don't want you don't want to make people sick. So there we go. We canned flour. And these lids are hot. Boy are those hot. Subscribe for more because I'll be canning other dry ingredients. I have a big bag of rice I need to can and a few other things. And some things in my presto canner. If you're interested in learning how to can corn, I have a corn video. You can learn how to do that. And there's a two, it's a two part video and it tells you step by step what to do because I didn't know. So that was my first time ever canning with my husband and my friend that is a professional, almost professional, I call her a professional canner. And we'll teach you step by step how to do, how to work the canner, how to do the jars, everything, everything about the canner, we'll go over that. I also have a video canning corn cob jelly and oh, that was so good. That, that was really good. So if you've never even heard of corn cob jelly, go watch the video. It tastes like a sweet honey. Boy, is it good. Doesn't taste like corn at all. All right, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.